It's not often you get to hear about someone's recovery journey while they're going through it. Most people prefer to wait until they are on the other side. Last month, I just felt this intense pull to share my story while in the thick of it with you. It felt extremely vulnerable, to be honest. However, the response I got from it showed just how important this is. I'm thrilled to share this with you. Today, I'm excited to share with you all of the improvements I'm seeing, plus I want to share with you the actual adrenal fatigue lifestyle I've been doing to support this journey and how it's impacting the therapeutics I'm using. Welcome to the Therapeutic Food Solutions Podcast. I'm your host, Marion Mitchell. I'm an integrative nutrition health coach, therapeutic diet expert, and founder of The Road to Living Whole. There are many different diets out there. It's hard to know which one is right for you with your chronic illness and autoimmune disease. In this podcast, I'm going to share with you the foundational pieces every single therapeutic diet out there shares and also how to use the best one for your particular diagnosis. If you've been looking for a meal planning partner, help navigating the complicated healthcare system and want to feel better quickly, I'm your girl. Grab your kombucha and notebook let's dive in. Before I dive into the amazing progress that I've been seeing this month, I want to give a quick recap. Three months ago, I went and saw my mentor friend and naturopathic doctor, Dr. Carolyn Stone, because I was dealing with unnaturally fast weight gain despite zero changes to my diet and exercise routine, an inability to sleep well, hard to fall asleep, hard to stay asleep. I had severe anxiety. I couldn't think clearly to save my life. I was exhausted. I had zero stress tolerance and I was struggling with poor digestion. We did a full blood panel, hormone panel, thyroid panel, and adrenal function test. We found that I am in early stage three adrenal fatigue and for the particular ones out there, I do know that it's called HPA access dysfunction. It's just a mouthful, so I'm calling it adrenal fatigue. Because I was in stage three adrenal fatigue, that was starting to impact my hormones and my thyroid antibodies were slightly elevated. Specifically, my testosterone is in the tank and my thyroid antibodies are slightly elevated. Thankfully, I got tested early enough that everything should go back to normal post-treatment. Quick side note, if you want to learn what working with a naturopathic doctor is like, please go back and listen to episode 15. I interviewed Dr. Stone for that episode, and she does a fantastic job of laying out exactly what you can expect to work with a naturopathic doctor. In episode 26, I shared my one-month update, and I shared with you the treatment plans that I was offered and the ones that I picked. So if you're curious about that, you'll want to go back and listen to episode 26. After doing month one episode, I realized that I never shared with you what the adrenal fatigue diet and lifestyle looks like and what I've been doing. Now, I before all of this, I already eat very clean, minimally processed. I exercise consistently and regularly. And once I realized something was off and I suspected it was adrenal fatigue, these are the adjustments I started making. I have 30 to 40 grams of protein for breakfast. A breakfast high in protein helps keep your blood sugar stable throughout the day. And when you are in stage three adrenal fatigue, your body has a difficult time regulating its blood sugar. So it can go up and down and then you're feeling all over the place, which can contribute to the anxiety and hunger and just all of the things. So I tend to run hypoglycemic naturally and making sure I get enough protein, especially first thing in the morning, helps keep it stable and in the normal range all day. During the week, when time is limited, I typically have Applegate chicken sausage and collagen in my cup of Rasa coffee replacement. I temporarily uh, stopped drinking coffee and started drinking the Rasa adaptogenic herbal tea coffee replacement for the time. I do now have a weak cup of coffee in the morning because I love coffee, but in the beginning, I did abstain from it. I increase my carbohydrate intake. When you have adrenal fatigue, it is not the time to be low carb and definitely not the time to do like keto or intermittent fasting. I typically stay around 100 grams of carbs per day, um, but I did increase that to between 120 and 140 and I do feel better. 
I drink one LM- LMNT packet per day, plus I'm making sure to salt my food. Adrenal fatigue reduces the hormone aldosterone, the salt monitoring hormone, and thus salt levels get depleted. Having adequate salt levels is essential for maintaining healthy blood pressure. If it gets too low, you'll have dizzy spells, and I naturally have low blood pressure, and I was experiencing more dizzy spells than normal, and increasing my salt intake definitely helped. Making sleep a priority. If you um, listen to episode 26, you'll know that sleep was a huge struggle for me. And I have been incredibly diligent about making sure I go to bed and wake up around the same time every day, making sure that that window is at least seven hours. And that is seven days a week. Uh, There is no late night partying for this girl on the weekends. I'm an old lady these days. I swapped cardio for more strength training and yoga. Once I suspected before I tested that I was experiencing adrenal fatigue again, I instantly reduced my cardio and increased my strength training. I still do cardio because it still benefits you, but it's only 15 to 20 minutes typically on a stair climber one to two days per week. Before I was doing like 40 to 50 minute sessions two to three times per week. Uh, I now strength train three times a week for 30 minutes. I try to do yoga one or two times a week, and then I do the cardio one or two times per week. If I'm tired, I will take it easy, guilt-free. Now to share what's been going good. So excited. I am losing weight. So excited to finally see the scale budge. I was pretty excited to see it stop going up, and I knew that I wasn't going to lose weight right away. And I expected the weight loss to be slow, but I actually have lost three pounds this month, which I think is pretty significant considering the last time I had adrenal fatigue, it was like a quarter of a pound a week and I'd have like months at a time of plateau. I'm so glad I decided to take advantage of the extra support with the adrenal glandulars and the tiny bit of testosterone that I'm taking. The next one that I'm seeing is being consistently clear-headed. In month one, it was like a novelty, like, oh my gosh, but now it's even more exciting because it's lasting. I am clear-headed. I am able to function. I'm consistently able to do the things that I need and want to do, and that feels incredible. And this is despite the fact that my puppy decided she doesn't like sleep. For like three weeks, it was so bad. The first four days, she woke up at 1030, 1130, 1230, 2, 3, and 4, and she would bark her head off every time, and it was horrible. By day four, I was so exhausted. I was in tears most of the day. Like I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. And then with advice from friends that own dogs, I tried a few different strategies. Those did help, but she still likes to wake up at 4 a.m. And I have been able to stretch that till 5 most days. Either that or she just whines more quietly and I'm able to tune it out. I don't know which, but I make her wait until I wake up, which is at 5, between 5 and 5.30 every day. I have an improved stress tolerance. Um, I have a lot on my plate. I run this business. I am a single mom. I have a lot on my plate and I would do okay until there was a curveball. Like my son had a project that he didn't do and all of a sudden we're, you know, we have to stay up and that is like my night is shot for like three days because he decided he just didn't want to do his work or whatever it is. It's a struggle for him to do his classwork. School's always been a struggle for him. So things like that would come up and it would just, it would throw me through a loop. And I had zero stress tolerance. So I was a hot mess. And the fact that I'm able to do all of the things and when curveballs come, I can take them in stride is really nice. And then the last benefit I'm seeing is I still am not struggling with anxiety like I was. And in fact, even like my worrying tendencies are so much better. And it might just be because I don't have time because there's so much going on. But I'm not struggling with anxiety. If I wake up in the middle of the night, I can fall right back to sleep. If, you know, as I'm going to sleep, I'm able to like take some deep breaths and start working on some like quiet meditation. And then boom, I'm like, oh, there's my alarm. It's fantastic. 
It is such a relief. And it's so fun to like compare notes between month one and month two and what's been the same and what's changed. It's just really cool. But one of the things I want to stress is that food and lifestyle absolutely matter for your healing journey. It just does. I would not be progressing as quickly in my healing if my eating and lifestyle were not uh, where they needed to be. Like eating right and doing the lifestyle modifications are absolutely necessary for the therapeutics I'm using to work effectively. If you're not eating right and you're not living correctly, it's like running uphill in the snow. Like you're, the, the medications can't do their job. Like they're trying, they're running uphill in the snow, but they're, the, the progress is slow. They're slipping on ice, right? Like everything is against them. But if it's, you know, you're eating right and your lifestyle's on par, then it's like smooth sailing and you're making progress and it's great. If you want to learn exactly what I'm doing, go ahead, go to the show notes and schedule a discovery call with me. It's completely free. You'll share with me what's been going on, and then I'll be able to share with you more in depth on my therapeutic food framework and how that would work for you and what's going on with you. My therapeutic food framework is going to help you feel better by teaching you the the food and therapeutic diet and lifestyle solutions you need for your particular situation. Not only will I help you understand what your body needs to recover from adrenal fatigue or maybe hormone imbalances, but you're going to get a lifetime sustainable transformation, and it's in three steps. Uh, Number one is I'm going to share with you the food baseline. So we're going to revamp what you're eating to be actually healthy and what that looks like and get it comfortable for you. And then once that's solid, then we're going to transition to the therapeutic diet, which is just being more intentional. And the reason I don't like to jump straight there is because sometimes that's like a 180 from what you're doing and it's not sustainable and it's stressful. The last thing I want to do is add more to your plate. Like you're already depleted and feel like crap. I don't want to add to your plate. So I want to make changes in a way that's realistic and sustainable because that's what works. And then you're going to do this therapeutic diet, but you can't stay there forever. Therapeutic diets are restrictive. You have to be super intentional. So we want to transition off of that and back onto the food baseline and maybe with some tweaks necessary from there. But it's a sustainable, doable way of eating and living that supports your health and loves your body so that it can function optimally so that you can do all the things that you want to do and have the energy for it and keep up. And there are meal plans, so you're not going to get stuck eating the same four things all the time and then get bored and then just like go off the rails. That's just not going to work. So if that's something that you're interested in learning more about, again, the discovery call link is in the show notes, completely free. Click on it, schedule it. You and I will be able to talk and I can share with you in more detail what that looks like. And I cannot wait to share with you month three transformation. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you found this episode helpful, would you do me a favor and help others find it by leaving a review, sharing a screenshot on social media, or sharing the link with a friend? By you sharing what you've learned, others are able to find this podcast and join our community. Be sure to check out my website, www.roadtolivingwhole.com for over 160 delicious recipes, a variety of meal plans, and a blog packed full of even more healthy living tips. If you'd like to learn more about how to work with me as your coach, you can schedule a free consult through www.roadtolivingwhole.com backslash health-coaching backslash. Until next time, friend. Bye.